KC9 BKV, WA0DJA for a quick one. Uh, quick one, go. Yes, uh, I was just wondering if you could uh, let me know what this thing sounds like. It's an old KWM2A, and uh, you sound great on this end of it. Name is Dick, located in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Okay, Dick, what was the call sign again? Willie Alpha, number zero, Delta Juliet Alpha. Okay, uh, it looks uh, fairly loose as so far as uh, uh, audio. Uh, you could fat it up a bunch. Uh, let me give you a quick notes, okay? Uh, if you have a pencil there, um, engage your compressor at a three. Uh, turn on your compressor and adjust it for a three. Move then to your ALC, and with mic gain in hand, uh, adjust your ALC to where it's running mid-scale to two-thirds by speaking normally into the microphone, not a test level, but just a normal level that you would you would have uh, with the proximity to microphone like you normally have, and you'd be on access to the microphone. So anyway, this ALC at uh, mid-scale to two-thirds, Roger. Then... Um, you uh, could go to your uh, EQ. Let me hear you just a minute. Uh, tell me about your antenna system. Okay. Well, I've got a vertical antenna. It's a Butternut HF2B. It's a portable antenna that I mount on a generator for any portable emergencies. And it seems to work fairly well. Um, it's modified for 160 and for 160. Um, that, that's it, plain and simple. Roger, Dick. Okay, when you go to EQ, crank in, uh, do you know where your EQ is? There isn't one on the KWM2. Is not one? No. Okay, uh, I would move then, uh, let's use a reverse uh, proximity effect, move closer to microphone. Uh, what we're trying to do is get a little bit more bottom end. Uh, you are very uh, mid-range. You're very mid-range uh, to top end, not much in the bottom end. So if you move closer to microphone, uh, that will start the uh, bass buildup. And we want to get about uh, two to three clicks uh, more uh, bass in that signal if we can. Roger? Okay. Uh, uh, let's see how this sounds right here. That's sounding better. What mic is it, sir? It's a Sure hand mic, a 404C. Okay, sir, I would suggest moving that mic to the side of your mouth, talking across it with it actually touching the side of your mouth, and uh, let me hear that. Okay, this is uh, touching the side of my mouth, uh, off to the side. Uh, when you're touching the side of your mouth, it's perfect. Just run it just like that, Roger. Roger, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Um, I'll be listening for you next Friday. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed what I've heard today. Thank you so much. Roger, Roger, Dick. Well, all things are possible. You don't need fancy EQs. Just uh, work the mic in that, that way, you know. Uh, uh, proximity effect is a well-known uh, uh, thing. The closer you get to a microphone, the more uh, it, uh, the bottom end builds up. And you can use that inversely if you're real muddy. Uh, back off, mic, you know. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, you, you don't necessarily have to have uh, uh, deaded uh, EQ circuits in your radio, Roger. Roger. You know, you, you've reminded me that back in the day, uh, mid-60s, this is how I used to hold the microphone. Exactly. Well, uh, you know, uh, with the advent of the uh, ICOM 7300, and they're just absolutely spectacular hand mic that uh, comes stock with that radio, uh, you, you do have to work that radio, that microphone from the side because it is a uh, electrode capsule microphone. And if you work it directly uh, without a wind, uh, foam windscreen, you, you know, you will have a lot of mouth noise. But if you work it uh, from the side of your, your mouth, you know, it's just, you know, it solves all, most all of the problems and, uh, uh, you know, just is a spectacular microphone for that, that radio. I do suggest uh, running, you know, going down to your local music store and getting you a little uh, a foam windscreen to slip over that mic. Uh, you know, they're making these little windscreens now, the foam windscreens, that they're only about three inches long. They used to be real long and they would cover the whole microphone almost. Now they're only about three inches long and they just fit 
over a, a hand mic just beautifully, and they expand so there's there's not that torque that wants to try to key uh, the microphone because of the windscreen's too too uh, taut uh, as it slips over that button. So it just works out great, Roger. Roger. Yeah, I have a 7300. I've also got a 7600 down in my regular shop. I'm or in my regular uh, uh, down in the condo. I'm up in my shop and I've got an F flying column set up here. So that that's what I'm on right now. But I I'm, I'm familiar with the Collins and and that or the uh, ICOM. I mean, and that 7300. I love that little radio, but I just can't let go of my 7600. Roger, Roger. Well, the thing is, uh, if you uh, in, are in such a manner of life that you can afford uh, all of them, the more the merrier. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll let you go, and I'll catch you another time, but thank you so much for, for the good words and, and the instruction. I'll remember it. Roger. Now, you're just uh, slumming with that radio, right? I'm away. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> that radio is, is an older radio. How old is that radio? 1968. Yes, yes, that was a very good year. I don't, I'm not sure how old my uh, uh, Yezu uh, uh, FT990 is, uh, but, uh, you know, they, they really made some great radios. Right now, I'm doing an AV test between my uh, Yezu uh, 990 and the uh, 7300. You know, the 7300 is uh, digitally uh, inclined and uh, uh, we're just uh, looking back and forth. I've got, uh, I've got them on an AV switch, actually an ABCDEFG switch, uh, and I can just go back and forth between the two uh, and, and listen to the same signal. Now, it's not a real absolute AV test uh, because uh, they're not both running the same antenna. The uh, 990 is running, uh, is my transmit uh, uh, device, and I'm running that on a dipole. And But I am running uh, two 10-foot uh, mag loops on the um, 7300. Roger. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, how do, how do you like that 7300? For the price, I don't think you can beat it. Uh, no, now I am, you know, I am obviously more familiar with the uh, 7300 from the standpoint of the transmitter. We've probably set up about 180 uh, 7300s and uh, probably 75 uh, 7610s. So I am really familiar with the uh, uh, 7300 from the standpoint of the transmitter, but I have no experience at all with the receiver. So that's what, what this is about, Roger. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar with which where you speak from. I had mine for two years before I really figured out the receiver, and, and it's fabulous now. I wasn't so impressed with it when I first got it. I wasn't unimpressed, but I, I didn't see where it was any better um, or, or even quite as good as my 7600. Roger. Roger. Well, you know, the the proof is in the pudding. I mean, as far as uh, uh, the evaluation in a Navy situation, uh, I'm listening for the uh, lack of distortion anomalies because of the digital aspects of the 7300. And, you know, that's a very subtle thing. Uh, and uh, so I'm trying to become uh, more familiar with, with the differences in my sidewalk survey. Roger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, I better ID. This is WA0DJA. Roger Dick, and whereabouts are you? I'm at uh, Kaiser, Missouri, uh, the center of the state, um, just southwest of Jefferson City. But I'm on the banks of the uh, Lake of the Ozarks. Roger, and which radio are you running right now? I'm sorry, you slipped under my noise. Uh, try one more time. Still under my noise. Let me try Rochester. Uh, come, back, come back one more time. Okay, you dropped way down to me, so the band shifted. I'm on a Collins KWM 2A transceiver. Collins uh, 2A, is that a Roger? Collins 2A. Well, I lost you. Uh, I, I'm not understanding you at present time. 
Uh, Roger, Roger. Yes, uh, I'm copying you on the Rochester, uh, New York SDR. That's the only reason I've, I can contact you. But uh, that uh, your radio is a Collins 2A. Is that a Roger? Collins 2A. KWM 2A. That is the Roger. Roger, sounds good. All right, let me get out of here, man. I've uh, I've been a uh, pumpkin for 15 minutes, Roger. opportunity we have. 7-3 and uh, have a uh, happy new year from W-A-0-D-J-A. Roger, Dick. Happy New Year's to you too, sir. Threes. And this is a KC9VKV. Got to get out of here now. Uh, we've enjoyed it uh, since uh, 3.30. We recorded live. If you want to check out your radio's audio, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, uh, you'll be looking for one air check specifically, and that is my group air check 12 27 19. My group air check 12 27 19. With that, three is all. This is KC9 VKV returning the frequency to normal amateur use.